Good day, my name is E.B. Nispel and we're going to learn how to drive while reading the book of Dune in preparation for the movie coming out in Australia. So today, this is the first time I actually got to play on the attacking side of this map with lethal results which you're about to find out. Now some of my early reflections on in regards to what kind of loadout you should be running. Ideally, once you get everything lock unlocked, if you want to run the tow launcher for your secondary armament, the main sh default shell, and you also want to run, I think it was the thermal smoke launcher, which basically it does the best of both worlds, where it's able to fire a smoke grenade and at the same time blocking lock on weapons to you. So there's almost no other reason to use anything else, so you use those. Also, you want to run HMG. The damage drop off on it is just so much better and the overheat on it is pretty generous so try and use that and you're pretty much in the clear to pretty much do well tanking on this. Now the commentary I'm going to provide here is I'm not going to try and talk over the whole entire view I'm just going to talk over some of the things I know so far what I think of the map because I've only this is literally as I just pointed out before the first time I played attacking on this map so I feel like Giving too much information could be detrimental because I will really reckon sometimes just experimenting and seeing what works and what doesn't work can really actually help you as a player. But I would like to still give you some general tips and things that I noticed when I played this round so that you can avoid some of the mistakes that I made even though I didn't make too many. So let's just get into the commentary right here. You can see here, I'm just, as usual, trying to make sure no one gets behind me. So I'm trying to chase these people down while minimizing the potential for them to shoot a rocket in the back of me. I know there's a person to my left, right, and sights, just all over. So one thing I'm trying to make sure is a consistent is my backside's facing towards my team. I push on up here because I can see that we've cleared our backside, my teammates are in front of me, and I push up onto this road here, and I can see we've got a whole bunch of infantry trying to push out here. So I just shut it down and keep an eye out for what's going on around me. The thing I just used right there, it's kind of like a self in repair, where it kind of like just generally starts some health repair, but it more importantly just kind of removes any part on you that's disabled. So if you get shot in a track, it's actually really useful. So, try and save it for when you actually have something disabled on you, especially if you have your tracks disabled and you're taking a fair bit of damage. It can be pretty much the difference between life and death. I've pretty much got ample support up here, so there's no reason for me to sit back here. So I'm going to just push straight on up. Still have no idea where the enemy is going to come from. I'm have no idea if it's going to come from my right or if it's in front of me. So I'm going to just sit in a position where I generally got some support and cover and a place to fall back to. While I have a kind of early look here and try and figure out where all these spawn points are, where they're going to come and attack me from, so I can maximize my efficiency in killing them breaking their will to try and push the objective and then moving on. At the early start of this game I noticed that while I was trying to adjust and fix some of my settings at, at this point in time every time I open a game it resets my resolution and a couple of other settings as well as my loadouts and so I have to fix all that stuff up every time I pretty much open the game at this point. It's really frustrating. I really think they should have delayed the release of this game to just to polish out of the pretty much I would still call this game is actually in beta at this point like I would not call this a full release push on up here just trying to explore the map a little bit while we have this flag all captured to ourselves I can see in the third person perspective there I can see where they're all spawning from so I'm just gonna chill here for a little bit get a gauge for the HMG feel out like what they are what I can do oh by the way just unlock the tow rocket once again just a reminder you should not run anything else, in my opinion, at this point, but the tow launcher. It is so useful. You can just use it to snipe out aircraft from t from the sky. You can use it against other vehicles, and it has actually pretty generous splash damage. So you, you can kind of get away with it just spamming and shooting it at infantry. The only probably the thing that I have to take note of and give you some advice is if you're gunning and using that, and you have your mate in there, it anytime the turret of the tank turns it actually kind of like swivels at the rocket a little bit so it makes it harder for the person to aim on it so at this point I would almost honestly recommend solo seating 
because the only time it's going to be consistent and reliable is if you switch seats, shoot it, and then rinse and repeat. There's just a lot of stuff they need to fix on the gunner seat. There's just a few bugs here and there that are I have no idea how long they've been in there because this game, I really do question how long it's been in, in building. Anyway, you can see here I've pushed myself up into kind of like a little bit of a divot where I can pull them back, but also at the same time cause some, some damage to them so I don't push, you can push up. I clear out the rocks in front of me and I start focusing this Osprey here. These Ospreys are really, really tanky and I think once you fully get all the unlocks for it, it actually becomes quite menacing. I'm pretty sure it uns like like a 50mm cannon thing on it. I've never had the chance to unit, use it, but if you go and check out on the loadout screen for what it looks like, it looks pretty menacing. So I feel like that vehicle is going to be an absolute juggernaut and a behemoth to deal with once everyone kind of like unlocks everything so it's at its full potential here. I'm still trying to gauge out this map here, so I'm playing pretty passive because I still like haven't really figured out where is the best and optimal positioning for it. So there's nothing wrong with that. Our team is basically rolling them at this point. So I do have this chance and freedom to actually really explore the map and kind of optimize what is the best procedure to help out my team. Just to give you a heads up, the shell velocity on the cannon is actually very generous. So you actually don't have to lead it too much to hit your targets. At this point, it's more trying to learn the movement mechanics of the aircraft in this game because they move very different from other titles so I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to line up the shots for them but once I figure, figure it out it's gonna be pretty easy because like the the velocity on these shells not just to repeat myself but it's very generous I go and position myself up here to help out with our uh, flag cap I'm still trying to <laughs> get used to the turret in this game. It's not, it's not exactly the same as Battle for 5, but it's pretty close. But either, either way, I just whiffed in a really easy shot there, so I have no excuses right there. Once again, just trying to keep an eye out for this Osprey. We find the spawn points over here, and we just really focus them down and cause some extra damage to their team. You just gotta make sure when you're going through the map that you just keep an eye out on all the different angles that people can peek you from. The footsteps in this game are quite loud. I do have a problem with my headset at the moment where the sound is actually quite low. So I think it's actually on the way out and the aux cord just seems to kind of dip in and out, in and out all the time and it makes it really frustrating because not only am I trying to hear these all these sounds and cues inside the game, but every once in a while I'm obviously just chilling in Discord with my mates trying to have a trying to have a bit of a bear now, have a chat and it just makes it impossible and I have to spend like a solid couple of minutes having to move my aux cable around just to find the right angle for it to actually work. Now if you didn't realize what that was locking on to me is that actually those heat sick grenades. You can actually outrun them a little bit and move around and it will actually dodge them otherwise once you unlock the thermal smoke thing it will basically neglect, neglect that completely and you won't have to really worry about them. Lucky enough, they don't do too much damage, so it's not too much of an issue. I get up on the high ground here and try and put my turret to full use here, spraying them down with the HMG and the AP shells, and fishing off the, finishing off these transport vehicles. These transport vehicles are quite tanky, so do take note of that. So you might have, I think, eventually when people figure it out, they all all kind of like sit in that and all jump out at the same time and they'll all just rocket at you. So try and keep your distance from them. So if they get try and get close to you, just back on up. Keep distance is your friend at this point. Now I can see to my right there's a lot of uh, commotion going on. There's a generous amount of enemies there as well as a tank. And I have no idea what's up ahead of me here. I'm still very cautious because I still haven't really learned the layout of this map. And I don't want to risk too much just yet. I just want to see it on my own accord and take my time and learn out how, how this map flow works. And I'm just using my raw instincts and a previous experience here just to keep myself alive here. I know to my left hand side there's a whole bunch of unseen enemies and I can see that's generally where the enemy team is going to come from because that's where the, f the flag cap zones are so it just makes sense that they're going to come from there. 
Now that my main fret has been eliminated to the right, I can really focus on pushing up ahead towards the enemy here. The whole team is really just rushing into them here. So what I'm trying to try and do is look for the people that they missed and clear them out and make sure that they're dead as well so that they don't get shot in the back. Basically our team at this point is basically using the sheer amount of plays against them just outnumbering them completely so they can get across the ground here. The cover here is actually pretty generous as well so it's not too bad compared to like some other maps like Hourglass where there's not really much to do and all you have to do is sit at the back of the map with a tank and it almost requires no skill whatsoever. It really does promote really passive tank gameplay and I find that most of the tankers that I've asked, like they will just sit at the back of the map I'll uh, shoot a couple of shells on them and they'll just run and leg it and there's just nothing really you can do. They're just trying to bait you at that point because yeah, it's just disgusting. I don't like it. I really hope that they promote more aggressive tank gameplay in this game. You can see now that I'm trying to suss out what's going on here and I've actually realized that, whoa, okay, all right. That team's really pushed up hard here. I want to get a part of the action here. So I come up here and trying to once again you can see, I am definitely playing cautious here. I'm definitely out of my comfort zone, but once again, the only way I'm going to get any better at this map is by playing it more, trying out things, see what works, what doesn't work, and just don't be afraid to make mistakes, because the only way you're going to get any better is by making mistakes and learning from them. So, I am still have no idea where the spawn points are, and that's what I'm trying to suss out here right now, is gathering information so that I can use it in future games and rounds on this map. We basically have secured the point, and I know from brief playing Breakthrough before, the next thing I need to do is go look out for people that are sitting outside the flag zone and just waiting for us to pass on by, so they can recap it while we transverse our way to the other flag to cap it out. And lord behold, you can already catch some guys here doing some early rotations from the other flag, or that they just spawned in and laid low and waited to an opportunity could arise that they can get some couple of cheeky kills on our team so that they can drain down the tickets. At this point here, I'm trying to have a little of explore off the higher ground and trying to find vantage points where I can basically shoot my turret up into the sky and take out aircraft. Now the reason why that's important because the biggest threat to you at the end of the day is going to be what's coming up from above, which where your turret can't point towards. Now this game allows you to have a turret rocket launcher on top of your turret instead of the normal LMG or other firearms at the moment. What you can see right now is I have a minigun on top and from what my friends have told me that have had the opportunity to gun for me that it absolutely just destroys infantry. and. To a degree, it does reasonable enough for damage to aircraft that are harassing you, but there's nothing more easier than killing a harassing aircraft with a one shot tow rocket. So, just take my advice, put it on, you won't regret it. And at this point, I can tell this Osprey is just dropping off people all around me, and that's what's causing me a lot of grief at this point. So I'm just pulling back here and I'm going to take out the fret because at this point it doesn't look like anyone's trying to really take him out. So I might as well do that for the team. I got a hit on him. He's disabled. Get another shot and finish the job. And that's just another easy five piece right there. Now that the, my main fret is eliminated, I can just push straight on up and deal with the fire cap and look for all the strugglers that are around the outside here. So while I'm driving all the way up here, I'm just having a little explore, taking notes. No idea what that aircraft was doing, but he's he's back on the deploy screen. And I know that the possibility of having the rest of their team from this flag out here is quite high because our team is pushing from the right, so it makes sense right so that whatever they're pushing towards, that's where the enemy is going to be. And that's how I was able to find out all where these guys are pop my smoke because I'm getting close down to 50 HP and lower and I just pull on back and just sit and wait for my HP to regen a little bit. We have uh, 20 seconds now to move up and go and attack the other objective site. 
So at this point, it's just us trying to close up and wrap up all the survivors that are left over, which I'm pretty sure contributes to more reinforcements. That's how it worked in Battlefield 5. I'm not sure if it's carried over into 2042, but that's some stuff I can worry about later and like minor details in how to excel at playing this game mode and kind of clutching it out. You can see right now, I'm starting to realize I'm racking up a fair amount of kills here. And not only like actual kills themselves, but a fair few assists as well. So I do think that minigun must be really, must be really good at, you know, just finishing the job off from all the damage that I've done here. And before I know it, I push on up here, and we're basically almost where we started before. I'm trying to hold my the position here, and the reason why I've chosen this here is because I've got a nice bit of deviation here, which I can pick up and out of and call back into if I get harassed too much. Also, it seems to be in the corner of the map where I can really avoid having people get up behind me, so the only things I have to really worry about is what's in front of me. And the more I can just worry about stuff that's not being behind me, and there's less threats behind me, the more time I can look forward and just focus on shooting the enemy and send them back to the spawn screen and alone our team to push straight up onto the objective. So pretty much optimally found the best spot here because I'm pretty convinced from this position here you can actually get a lot of the C1 spawns and make it really hard for them to keep and hold on that flag. So from here you'll be able to shut off all these guys here and allow your team to get a really good foothold on to C. And then from there you can just circle around the outside of the flag and just really make it a horrible time for them. Just be aware of the fact that they can get on top of the derelict ship and make it really hard for you and have a horrible time. Anyone with uh, recordless launchers up there and lock-ons, it, it gets really annoying and you have to sit really far back to go clear them. You can see where I am and it's only giving me the gun depression just enough as it is for me to finish them off and get rid of them. If you're anywhere closer to where all the infantry of my, our team is, it starts to get really hard to shoot back at them, so do take note of that. I decide that at this point, I've got pretty much this whole area for my own to deal with. Interesting. Anyway, so I've got this whole area to explore here and kind of like suss out what's going on. I'm still getting rewarded for sitting back here and having control of this little zone here so you get a little bit tired I figure alright I've killed enough people here maybe we'll just push on here have a little look ahead see what other places I can take advantage of what are the meta places to sit you can see right here I'm trying to take advantage of the situation but I really can't because they have the high ground here and it's actually a really good position that they hold right there so as a tanker there's not much you can really do about that position right here so I push on a little, up, a little up here and try and see if I can get a few more kills before I back on up because I know that's a position that's probably not the best to hold, especially when I've just figured out, alright, I think that's the spawn point behind me as well, so I'm basically exposing my backside to the enemy's uh, uncap, which if the tanks are coming from there, which you can just see right there right now, that could have easily been the end of me right there, but lucky enough, I get a few shells onto him and have a teammate close and finish the job. So that wasn't a really uh, good push by that tanker whatsoever, but at the same time, I can respect that, that he was going all in or nothing. So once again, I almost you know, got the better of the scenario, but I was in a position where I was well off, protected, and I wasn't in any really danger at all. So I'm just trying to figure out if I can shoot underneath this, but no, with no prevail, I'm pretty sure I'm just hitting some of the pipe bridge there and just not hitting my shots there. And you can see that this looks all the way down to the other side of the ship as well. And notice that there's a hovercraft here and I go take him out. These things can take so much damage but as much as I would like to complain about them, infantry in this game already have a hard enough time as it is. They have so much time to travel across the open ground, it's just not even funny. So, honestly at this point, I don't think the transport tra transport vehicles need any nerf to how much HP they have. Like, otherwise they're, just, they're gonna have no chance when you've got things like this in the game. 
I'm getting focused, or I think I'm getting focused by the chopper, so I play a little bit more passively and try and once again gauge out the situation as well. Also, they hold C flag here, and there's a couple of doorways that they can kind of peek out and shoot rockets to. I played this map a couple of times before this round on Conquest, so I was already aware of like the cheeky positions on this derelict cargo ship that they can really punish you for. So I'm trying to respect the, ter the terrain that they have acquired at this point. The real estate that they hold is very dangerous. And this is the thing right here, I do not understand why it's in the game. This thing I really do think needs a little bit of a rework, the hack thing. I think at this point it should be only able to do visual distortion as well as removing any of your countermeasures. You should be able to still shoot, maybe your turret turns slower, but like I would like to leave that to be just non-existent. As long as it was visual and you can see my X and G ability right, it should be able to disable that so I can't really any pull out any trump cards. That would be a better way to balance that I think in my opinion. Anyway, I'm back on up here because I can tell there's a whole bunch of people that spawned here. If you were looking at my hub before, there was actually an opportunity for me to actually take notice of it, but because I'm so absorbed in trying to explore the map, I don't really notice it. So once again, it was another opportunity that the team could have taken advantage of it and really punished me hard for my simple mistake there. But lucky enough, it didn't happen, and I'm pretty sure everyone at this point, everyone's just trying to explore the map and fi figure out what's the best way to approach these maps. I'm just lucky enough that this map favours vehicles, so I'm using all the fundamentals that I have from the past embedded in myself just to make sure that I can get away with what I want and, and to achieve in this game. Now that I've secured the sector, I can just push on up here and do what I want. Just admire my own score at the moment, I'm not going to lie there. Pretty chuffed with myself, so I'm going to go and push on up here and see, see what I can do. Normally when I have a scenario like this and I have plenty of tickets to work with, I'm not going to lie, I like to take advantage of the situation and indulge myself in some extra frags. So I decide to play a little bit more passively in this last section, but eventually I get sick of it and I try and finish the game, which I almost end up getting punished really, really hard for. And lucky enough I had a good squad mate to get me out of that sticky scenario and the dream was kept alive. But Sorry for that spoiler, but I just couldn't help myself. You'll see what happens. Anyway, so I'm trying to figure out once again, find out what the best way to approach this flag is. I probably should have just pulled out the big map at this point and have a look at what the out of bounds zones were and where their uncap was, and then I would have a better idea of how to position myself. But my whole team's trying to push the open ground here, so I'm trying to do my best and give suppressing fire and really harass them. I'm trying to just give my team an opportunity to get into more favourable positions so that the rest of the squad mates can maybe spawn in or hold a better footing and so that we're always in a position to take on that flag. I back on up at a very good time here because their tank comes out of spawn here. I don't think our friendly tanker is very aware of that there's a tank in front of him so I'm trying to help him out here but I think he realises the enemy tank that he's fighting two tanks there at that point so He's got to worry about him. I kind of get a little bit frustrated from sitting back here because I can't really get any decent shots on any of the infantry. Speaking of infantry, I do not know why that guy is there. Anyway, I want to try and find out where's the best position where I can get some really cheeky kills, put some pressure on the flag, and also at the same time just farm some kills because let's be real, that's what every tanker wants to do is get in there, cause some havoc, annoy some people, get a big dub, but at the same time get a big fat juicy score at the end. So I'm just trying to figure out where do I need a splash on the wall here to kill infantry or where are they going to sit so that they can keep me off the flag and farming them. So I'm trying to play a little bit passive here once again, learning the map, trying to find the best points where I can position myself if I get into a little bit of a sticky situation but at the same time be somewhat part of the action and contributing to my team. See right now I wasn't aware of it at the time because I hadn't unlocked it yet but right there that would have been a perfect opportunity to use the tow rocket once you lock, unlock it. Once you've unlocked it trust me you, you'll see what the commotion is. I'll probably be putting out footage of that really soon. I might do like a 
week one highlights thing and just show all the stuff that I pulled off in the first week of the game just to give you something to enjoy because at this point I don't really stream but at the same time I want to give you something to enjoy so it's not just my um, 10 commentaries and you know flawless gameplay rounds that you get to experience or just some rounds where I thought they were really worthwhile now I am absolutely baffled as to what's going on here I get really really dunked on here I'm very thoroughly pretty much being outplayed there and at the same time I'm trying to still trying to figure out how the hell he got through there but either way it looks like he pushed through the middle there got really lucky no one really stopped him and he was able to take full advantage of the scenario get up behind me and finish me off but I don't think he realizes that I'm dead so I decided to be a little bit cheeky here and call in my mate for a little bit of extra help so that we can keep the dream alive. Now I'm pretty sure how the tank spawn works when you call it in, whatever your teammate's loadout is, is what you get. So he hasn't really used the tanks in the game, so this is the bare bones basic tank that I get right here, but I don't care. I'm going to take advantage of it and push and get a little bit of revenge on this very zealous tanker. And he's gone and I live to fight another day and decide to come on in and see if I can get some really cheeky kills at the end of this round and finish off the game with a nice big kill streak. Now that pretty much wraps up the game, that's that's it, we're about to cap the sector now and it's GG. All on up, with kills and assists we got 145 kills for z zero. Perfect game. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's commentary. I know I didn't give you a full like this is how the meta or how you play this map but I thought this would be interesting because at this point you and me were all in the same boat we are learning how to play these maps and I want to show you the processes that I go around about doing that anyway peace